Hey traders, checking in on the crypto sector again, wanting to see Bitcoin's reacti reaction to the election. We want to see what the altcoins are doing now that ETH has seen a little bit of news about their 2.0 launch and a spike in the altcoin space in response to that. And of course, we want to see if these Bitcoin bulls can see continuation over the double top of 14,100. It is breaking at the moment, but we need some follow through. Stay tuned. So we'll start it off with the dollar again. We have a four hour tightening range where we have a low of the reaction last night and the election, and we don't have results for the election. Right now it's looking a little bit more likely like Biden's gonna pull it out, but it's gonna be long and drawn out. So we got our low, high, and we're scouting a four hour higher low to form. If it forms, we will then look for a four hour lower high and a four hour equilibrium to continue tightening up through tomorrow if we get this bounce for that lower high. So with that four hour time frame, we were directly inversely correlated to that in Bitcoin to start the morning. We had the high of last night, which was a double top with 14,100. We pulled back significantly. We bounced. And this morning we were looking for the potential of a four hour lower high and a four hour equilibrium, which again would be directly inverse to the setup that the dollar has. We then got a bull break. And that, in my opinion, is because number one, the bulls are strong and they have a bullish correlation with the dollar, meaning that Dollar strength doesn't hurt the Bitcoin bulls nearly as much as dollar weakness helps the Bitcoin bulls. Another factor is the S&P 500 is seeing a ton of strength. Last night, Bitcoin was directly tied to the S&P 500's reaction to the election. And right here is when we hit the Bitcoin high and the double top. And then right here is that four hour consolidation for Bitcoin. We can see now, since then, the S&P 500 bulls are in absolute complete control with a monster day. This is one of the most bullish days that we've seen in the broader market in a long time. And that's another reason that the Bitcoin bulls are seeing some strength. So at this point, we have a bull break of this double top. That being said, that bull break is only about 1% at this point. Bulls certainly want more. The last thing we want to do is see bull breaks with a lack of follow through because then we have the possibility of rising wedges forming. And look at that right there. Just drawing that for the first time. Got to keep an eye on it. Again, it's not enough for me to say I'm selling all my position or anything like that, but we just have to be aware that's a beautiful channel. That's the first time I'm drawing that. So four hour time frame, really nice channel. It's less of a rising wedge and more of a channel. We can see we're not exactly constricting these lines to a flex point. If we were to reject the most important support for me is 13,530. That's our four hour higher low. And that's our low of the reaction. So if the low of the initial bearish reaction to the election were to break, it would be a notable shift in momentum away from the bulls. Another level that bulls can be using is the daily higher low of 13,215. Because if that level were to be lost at this point, we would lose the daily 12 period exponential support for the first time in over a month or just about a month. And that would show us weekly consolidation is likely. So two support levels to be watching. And of course, resistance is very limited up here. And that's one thing that's a little bit frustrating to the bulls because breaking this resistance with nothing else nearby, generally you see follow through when that happens. And in the current environment, we obviously are not seeing that follow through. So the resistance from where we stand after 14,000, you know, we're looking up, well, there it is. I'm learning a lot as we're doing this video. So January, 2018, the high of this week, was 14,253, and that's exactly where we're pulling back right now. So that's a resistance level. If we get over that, we're looking up 16,275 as the next level. So we would look to six to 15,000 psychological next if we can get over and get more follow through. So four hour uptrend will be our short term guide. We actually still have an hourly uptrend at this point. Haven't even started hourly consolidation. Anything above 13,744 is an hourly high or low. So we're watching the hourly uptrend, the four hour uptrend and the daily uptrend. And depending on how protective you want to be on profits determines which of those time frames you're going to be using for any stop levels. 
So here we've got ETH2 deposit contract released. And when that happened, Bitcoin bulls spiked in a big way and the ETH BTC chart spiked in a big way as well. So looking at the daily perspective, we had just dropped to a lower low. Now we have broken some resistance. Next major level, I'm looking at 411.77. We have a couple tops in the 411s and then 421.47. ETH BTC. So there's your big spike. Is that enough? Again, I've been keeping a very simple statement. If we are in a daily downtrend, then I'm not looking anywhere but Bitcoin. Anything under 2935 is a daily lower high on this bounce. If we were to reject from that level, the bulls would then be hoping for an inverse head and shoulders on the 12 hour time frame. So that's what we're gonna be watching for into this weekend. If we fail this resistance, we're then gonna be watching for the higher low compared to the bottom of 275 and then trying to change that trend with the inverse head and shoulders, which would break the daily lower high pattern if that were to confirm. So it's a decent bounce, but more follow through is needed. Four hour time frame. you could also draw this falling support line. And if I wanted to really get drawing some longer term lines here, I would be drawing an anchor point here. We'll see where this candle closes in an hour and 20 minutes, but a little bit of a falling wedge here on the four hour time frame. But price level matters to me more than this trend line. It's just a nice visual to be keeping an eye on. So we'll see if the bulls can prove it. And ETH is trying to lead the altcoins. It's, it's on its horse in front of the army, trying to rally the troops. And right now, we're seeing a response in the alt space to that. But again, more follow through is needed. BNB USD daily inside bar, anything under 29.31 is just a daily lower high. We're seeing some altcoin bulls that previously had a lot of strength losing that momentum. That being said, weekly time frame, we are looking for a weekly higher low compared to 22.10, and we're looking for a weekly equilibrium. And if you'll note, the S&P 500 is in a weekly equilibrium. So daily oversold RSI is a good time to be scouting for a weekly higher low. So if I want to be an aggressive bull, if we see another leg down under 25.75, the daily RSI will be on the verge of oversold, and there's a potential play off of 22.10 support if that daily RSI gets oversold. Otherwise, we have to see a daily trend change back to the bulls for a weekly higher low to be set. Link USD has seen a much more significant bounce. So again, whatever altcoin you're interested in, you gotta be looking at that Bitcoin pairing as well to see what the trend is. Link BTC is doing nothing to change this longer term trend. We could bounce for days and still be looking at a lower high compared to 849 on this daily time frame. So I know there is no shift in momentum happening in the near term, a lot of follow through will be needed for bulls to prove themselves. YFI USDT, I'm getting some questions about this. I would treat this like a falling knife and pretty much like black dirt breakdown, all time lows. That's not the case. All time lows is down at 3000, but we're in an area with a lack of support. And if you're looking at this chart, hopefully it's reminding you of the crypto space in 2017. Massive hype and euphoria, and then that hype and euphoria is completely gone, and it's a long, prolonged, slow bleed, and it takes a lot to get any kind of hype and euphoria back. So I don't like any entries on this weakness. Again, it's the kind of setup where if I want to be a conservative bull, I don't care if I miss the first bounce because I know any kind of move has to change the daily trend for follow through. So if we bounce 30%, it's just a daily lower high. And I could say, oh man, I missed the bounce. Or I could say, great, big bounce, bulls proved it to me. I'm gonna enter on the daily higher low and I'm gonna use the stop, the low at that point as my stop and hope that the daily trend change confirmed. The first bounce that we see here, unless it's on some kind of massive surprise news and huge bull volume pours in and we see a short squeeze, in the absence of that happening, we are just gonna look for a daily lower high on the next bounce. We have the four hour Downtrend as a guide, we have been in a four hour downtrend since 15,000, which is a solid 35% pullback, something along those lines. So again, bulls aren't proving anything. And if you're just entering because we pulled back so much, in my opinion, that's not the right mindset to be having. And that's not a good risk to reward setup. LTC USD, daily timeframes in a downtrend, but we are looking for a weekly higher low to be set. And it's a potential weekly equilibrium forming here. 
and it's a monthly equilibrium as well. Keep an eye on this monthly chart. We've highlighted it before over the last couple of weeks, but I am looking at this as a high, low, lower high, and bulls are trying to set a monthly higher low at 41.64. Currently, multiple monthly inside bars that would have to break bullish to do so, but if we break $69, it's the first monthly trend change back to the bulls on LTC since the all-time high. We know Bitcoin has already done that with its monthly bull flag. Let's see if LTC can be a laggard. Daily downtrend is all bears still. Again, just looking for lower highs on bounces, but that doesn't mean we can't be prepared and watching because we've got another falling wedge here. Different anchor point. So that's a good one. This one has been playing out for three months. We are trying to hold support. If we were to bounce, I would look for another rejection from resistance. Let's see if we head into the end of the year in a daily falling wedge on the LTC BTC chart. Again, it doesn't mean that I'm making any moves on this chart. It just means if we were to stay in this until the end of the year and we get close to this flex point, I know, okay, start paying close attention. And this is essentially just me setting this on the shelf and saying, keep checking in on this, you know, once a week. And let's see if something shapes up that we can act on eventually, but certainly not there yet, in my opinion. So yes, the altcoin bulls have responded to this ETH move. If ETH BTC just gives us a daily lower high, we know nothing is proven. We're watching the 12 hour inverse head and shoulders on that time frame. And if ETH BTC is not proving it, we know most altcoins pairings with Bitcoin are not going to be proving it either. Let's see if Bitcoin bulls can give us a bit more convincing follow through. Four hour higher low, most important factor for me. And again, we just want to be a bit cautious about this resistance line. That's now the most important time frame and pattern for me. We'll keep an eye on that and we'll keep checking in. Do good things. I appreciate you watching. I'm out of content here, so we'll recycle to something from the past couple of years. See you next time. Adventure time. We are headed to Vegas. This is Lake Mead, which is about a half hour outside of Vegas, I believe, which you certainly wouldn't expect just by looking at it. But a great spot to camp. I camped here and had a coyote experience where certainly have heard coyotes off in the distance in the past, but man, when that sun went down and I'm out there by myself, and I swear there were a hundred surrounding me, all doing their yipping and wailing that sounds like screaming, dying children. It was quite the experience. Certainly have never experienced anything like that before or since, but knowing that it was coyotes made me a little bit more comfortable. I certainly wasn't fearing them coming at me, but man, they are eerie. Two days in a row, we got some eerie themes out there. So Lake Mead was pretty cool. Nice moon. And it's just a spot to hang out and cool off during the hot, arid day. But I was in Vegas and I don't have any pictures of Vegas because I don't like Vegas at all. So I was visiting my friends. My buddy's there playing poker. I've been playing poker since high school. He and I played in college and he was playing online full time. And he pretty much went poker and I went technical analysis and stocks. And I tried to teach him when I was there, but he was more interested in poker. So we played together. And for those that are familiar with poker, my style, I do play some buy-in, but generally I would satellite in, you know, $50 satellite to get into a $500 tournament and then hope to place in those tournaments. And the best part is, you know, we're used to trading online or playing online and you have to wait months, weeks or months to get your payouts if you can even get them, if it's even, you know, legal. And I have in the past, or someone I know in the past has paid you know, 20% of my withdrawal from winning a tournament to someone in China to get the payout, transfer funds over to the US. And th those are what we had to do to get our money. But here in Vegas, they legalize it in Nevada. So you could literally cash out and go same day to a casino and they would give you cash, which was unheard of. So we were playing for a while and having a good time and doing all right. And I hung out there for, like I said, a month. It was just a reset break, have a nice shower, have some good food and have a bed to sleep in and just explore around 
because I could not, I mean, Las Vegas is pretty much, if you take everything wrong with humanity and you just put it in one, that's Las Vegas. It's, it's a dirty, sad place. And you see all the glamour on TV and in the movies at the fancy places on the strip. But man, if you go to some of these smaller casinos and the poor souls that are stuck to those machines, it's very depressing. And if I didn't have spots like this to go to, I would not have lasted very long at all. I literally didn't go to the strip at night in Vegas once. I, I was there for a month and I didn't go to the strip and I have no regrets about that. That's just me personally. I'm not big for flashing lights and crazy stimulation and substance abuse and all that, but it was fun, kind of. This is Spring Mountain National Rec Area, another spot that's just right outside of, of Vegas. And I couldn't find a spot to camp that was flat, so I ended up sleeping on a hill. And of course, it was the first night I slept without my tent because I couldn't pitch it on a hill. And I slept without a tent all the time on my other road trip with my buddies. But the first time I slept sleep without a tent, this was months into the road trip, and of course it snows on me, but waking up, it was nice and magical. I pretty much just put myself against the base of a tree so I wouldn't roll down the hill but still slept fine. Some awesome sunrises and sunsets out there. And I love just, it's almost like shopping for a house every night where you're walking around and saying, all right, I can camp anywhere in this area. Where's the best view? Where's the sun gonna rise? Where's the sun gonna set? Where's the best spot to camp? And setting up a home base. So from here now, my buddy and I, who I was staying with, we are going to road trip back this is as far west as I went, and then heading back east and going through Zion. I think we go to Zion National Park next, and then loop around, head through the south, through Texas, back to the east coast. Wrapping up the road trip, didn't have a whole lot. Pretty much uh, moved really fast on the way home versus the way out there. And that's that. We'll see where we end up with probably a couple more days on this road trip, maybe a couple more road trips after that. Short little picture series and then I'm gonna have to start doing some videos again and hopefully some spring planting got some garden planting parties going on tonight so we're getting pumped for the spring and I hope you are fantastic